Hallelujah, hallelujah. No matter what the situation might be, no matter what the thing is that you face, no matter how impossible it may seem to you, you can go and speak to that mountain and tell that mountain how big amen. your God is. That's right, amen, praise the Lord. Because He is able. He is more than able. No matter what we might be facing, He is more than able to do all things. Brother Peacock, it is always good to see you, always good to be with you all. Amen. Always good to be back in the home church, good to see what God is doing and what is about to accomplish. Praise the Lord. Good to see every one of you. It's even good to see you, Danny. Danny said when he saw me with my mask on, he said, I'm talking about Danny now, not Daddy. Not my Daddy, D-A-D-D-Y, Danny, D-A-N-N-Y. I'm going to be sure I straighten that out before I say what I say or persist to say. He saw me with my mask on, he said, I need to keep doing that no matter what happens. Lord, forgive me. Daniel chapter 3. I mean, nine. If you have your Bibles, Daniel chapter nine. One verse, and then we're going to pray. If you stand for the reading of God's word, and then we will pray and get right into the word. Daniel chapter three, um, chapter nine, verse three. Daniel speaking said, and I said. My faith unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Main part of my message is the first half there of verse 3. And I set my faith unto the Lord God to seek him. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that the word is anointed already. Father, I thank you that I already feel your presence even in this house, even this very moment. I thank you, Master, for what you're about to do and for how you're about to move. Now, Father, I ask you to anoint me today with that precious anointing. God, hide me behind the cross of Calvary that we might see Jesus. Let my words be clear. Let my words be the words you would have for your people today that we might be encouraged and that we might be strengthened in Christ's most holy name. We pray and ask these things. Amen. And amen you may be seated. Daniel said in chapter 3, uh, chapter 9, verse 3, I set my faith to seek the Lord with prayer and supplication. We are living in a time where it seems that the devil is on a rampage. Yes. In Daniel, I can't remember the exact chapter right there, but in Daniel it actually talks about the devil will do everything he can to weary the saints. Yes. We're living in a time where it seems that the enemy has come in like a flood, where it seems that everything is going downhill. But friends, we must take in mind and remember a few things. First of all, we must remember, as Paul said, or in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, I believe it is, Paul said, for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood. That's right. Now, I preach all day on that part right there alone. <laughs> we spend a lot of time fighting a battle God that we're meant for us to fight. That's right. We spend a lot of time fighting uh, uh, going on it, people. I like it to chapter 14 where the children of Israel come out of out of our bondage, they went to Red Sea, 
as they are wondering what are we going to do when God is, and God spoke to Moses and said the bad be still, be, the battle is not yours but the Lord and you will not have to fight. But we have got it in our mind so often that we've got to come back and fight the way that we fight yes. is on our knees. Yes. That's the way we should be fighting. The way that we fight is in our prayer closet. Yes. Getting a hold of God. Amen. Daniel said, I've set my face to seek the Lord yes. by prayer and supplication. Yes. How do we seek the Lord? How do we set our faith? Where's the world faith? There's the great world for faith there. Well, let me back up. The great world for faith there means that we prepare or we dedicate ourselves to do something. Yeah. We've made up our mind that we are going to do something regardless of what it takes. We have made up our mind that that is something that we are going to do. Paul, Daniel said, I've set my face to seek the Lord. He set his face, his very presence, and everything about him is the great quote for faith. He has said everything about him that he is going to seek God with a fresh forward and a freshness about him until God comes down and answers. But we have got to have a made up mind that we're going to seek the face of God. But first of all, you ask, how do we seek the face of God? First of all, we get our priorities in order. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus talking said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We've got to have a made up mind that seeking God and pleasing him is our first and foremost priority. We must realize and understand it is the first thing that we're going to do. It is at the top of the list of what we're going to do. Nothing else matters compared to it. We are going to make up our mind that pleasing God and getting as close to Him as we can is our top innermost priority. Yes, that's right. Excuse me. We have got to get to that place where we get up, we go and begin to pray. I mean, it, no, it, it probably wouldn't hold all of us, and I'm a to myself. We get up, first thing in the morning, we, uh, if you have to get out of bed to do it, then do that, but get up. I said, I smile on God and say, God, I dedicate myself to you today to have your way. I offer up my body as a living sacrifice to you for you to do with me as thou wilt. Yeah. We have got to get back to where we are seeking him with everything that we have. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter, I believe it's 29, says, you God speaking said, and I'm paraphrasing it, like I can't remember this that fast, but it said he, he said that they that will seek me early will find me when they seek me with all their heart. Yes. We're gonna have to seek him with everything that we have. A fresh and a new. Yes. You look at those things that's going on around us. Have you ever seen such a mess? Have you ever thought that we would come to the place? There was approximately a year ago when I was here, I think that might have been the last time I was here. Have you ever thought that within a year's time we would see uh, our nation pretty much shut down because of a tiny virus? And it's a real virus. Don't let anyone kid you, it is a real virus. It's a real sickness. We have a minister friend right now that fits across the Jordan. 
because of this virus, because of other health issues. But we must realize and we understand that we have got to get a hunger for God a for rest in the new. Matthew 5 and verse 6, I believe, say, I believe it's verse 6, uh, the Gospel of Matthew 5, it says, The blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Amen. for they shall be filled. We have got to get back to a place where we are pro top priority is seeking God with a fresh fervor and a fresh is about him until he comes down and until he moves every obstacle from our way, everything from our, from our direction. We have got to get back to a place we'll seek him with all our whole being. This is what Daniel said, I'm seeking the Lord with everything that I have, that he would intervene and move in this situation. Yes. Number two, the way we seek God, the, the, the way we seek God, the second way, is we seek His presence through prayer. Oh, we know all the promises of God. His word is written in the book of Psalms, it says that in the presence of the Lord is a fullness of joy. Yes. We get into his presence, and I mean there will be a fullness of joy there. You can have a joy when everything, when all the hell is breaking loose around you. There can be a joy that is there when we are in his presence. We, God has given us promise after promise. In Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. In the book of James 5, 16, the fifth scripture we love to quote, so much uh, it says the effectual uh, yes, fervent yes, will uh, yes, of a righteous yes, man a uh, bill of much uh, we have yes, got yes, to get back uh, to war we begin to pray uh, as we have never prayed before uh, going back to Ephesians uh, chapter 6 verse 12 uh, and finishing it up friends, we're in a war uh, we're in a warfare we got to realize that uh, we're not wrestling uh, against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against the very powers of hell. That's right, amen. And it says when the enemy is coming like a flood in the book of Isaiah, God will raise up a standard, but we have got to do our part. We have got to begin to pray. We have got to begin to bombard heaven. We have got to get to the place uh, where we have a set mind uh, and a set face. Uh, God, I'm going to get a hold of you uh, no matter what it takes. Uh, in, there, in Daniel chapter 10 and that chapter 4, Daniel talks about the fact that uh, he had been fasting and praying uh, for three weeks. He had set his face and he, when he began this, he didn't say, I'm just going to fast for three weeks and become the answer like that. Yeah. I don't believe he even had a time set on it, tell you the truth. He said, but the person I don't know, the Bible says it, he said, yes, he, he fasted for three weeks. Yes, he did do that. But my point is, I don't believe when he, at the beginning of the fast, he said, I'm going to pray for three weeks and then I'll stop. Amen. I'm going to fast for three weeks and I'll stop. Don't fast, let's be fasting that long, going to long. But there is power in fasting, but that's a, that's a later point. Amen. But Daniel said, I'm going to get a hold of God. Yes. With everything that I have. Every waking moment, I'm going to do what I can do. To find God's will, to find out what, what God has in store. I'm going to seek his presence uh, with everything that's in me. We're going to seek his presence through prayer. Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed. Uh, there's a sign that they sing. That some, uh, I've heard again another thing at times that Daniel prayed for 21 days. No answer came. Sometimes we have prayed and prayed and we wonder, 
God will allow you while you're not answering me. What has happened? Well, you ask, why are you not coming true? But you see, if you read on down through chapter 10, Gabriel finally gets to Daniel yeah. after 21 days. Yeah. And Gabriel says, I'm paraphrasing again, but read the chapter line closer to Daniel said on that, uh, Gabriel said, the first day that you prayed, Amen. God sent me from the throne to come to you. But the prince supposed uh, withstood me for 21 days. Uh, he has fought against me uh, and he is trying to keep me from bringing you the answer. Uh, if the Daniel had quit praying uh, on 20 days, uh, God would have told Gabriel back and said, forget about it. He ain't serious. But friend, when we get serious, we must realize and understand hell is going to fight against you with everything we keep God. That's right. We have got to get back to the war we will pray as we have never prayed before. We have got to be willing to pay that price as we have never done before. It's new. We gotta be willing to pay the price of fresh and anew. Number three, we have got to be willing to seek his face for getting humble before him. Humility applies a day destroying many thoughts. Yeah. I was reading a book that was written back in the 1800s. And uh, there were some groups that had gotten, uh, groups of people that had gotten a uh, prayer meeting going, and I mean, they'd been praying for about a month. And I mean, they're praying, they're bombarding heaven, they're seeing God move, miracles are beginning to happen. Some big name preacher found out this was going on and decided. He better go and preach because they needed to hear his him. He needed to give them the wisdom they needed to get. So we went on a certain day. They had his pulpit set up. He got up there and began to preach. And that revival just broke off. People quit praying like they were doing. Because that preacher was so full of pride. They need my God. The Bible says that God resisted the plow in James 4, 6. Uh, he says that God resisted the plow, but he, uh, but he gives more grace to the humble. Yes, amen. Time and time again throughout Scripture, we see that those that are lifted in plowed will be brought down. As a matter of fact, the book of Proverbs says, that destruction go up, that destruction go up before pride, and and a fall before hardly spirit. I get, I get get them too mixed up sometimes, but we see that pride will bring you down. Amen. It cause one. Right. Now humility understands something. It's not one going around putting themselves down all the time. All the humility the Bible is talking about is realizing and recognizing that I cannot do this in my own strengthful power. I need the help of Almighty God who will empower me. I need His Spirit to empower me to be the vessel. I need to be a friend, we have got to get to that place uh, where we are praying continually uh, and getting into his presence. Yes. I come prepared to preach another message out of Acts, chapter 12, verse 5. It talks about Peter. They, uh, Herod was about to kill Peter. And on the night before, the church had been making intercession, praying unto God continually. And I'm going to bring out a point, I'm going to bring this point out over there. Talk about getting in the presence of God. When we're praying, 
We need to make a conscientious effort that we are coming into his very presence. Yes. Yes. So, uh, the book of Psalms says, Enter into his gates with praise, into his courts with thanksgiving. When we come to that place that we feel that we have actually gotten and take the time to prepare to get into his presence, God will move in such a way. Yes. There's a story told of a gentleman who had been seeking God on a knee. And he was trying every way he could to find him one thing. He went and he, 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 he uh, we got to get specific in our prayers, by the way. He went and he talked out exactly what he was asking the Lord to do. <coughs> he got it all together and he put it into a folder and he folded the folder up. He now closed the folder. Then he went and he got him a shower, put on his business suit, he was a businessman, put on his business suit, combed his hair and everything, got his shoes all parched, and went to his prayer closet and got down on his knees with that folder and presented it. To God. Now God, and God granted his request. Not because he had a business suit on, not because he went and got a shower and all this stuff, but because he got so serious before God. Amen. He took the time to prepare. He took the time to make that effort. He got down to business, if you will, with God. That's the way we've got to get rid of it. Amen. We have got to set our face. God, I'm not leaving here till I get an answer from heaven. I'm not moving from this place, this place of prayer in our spirit, in the feeding cup of fish. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm going to read a verse there because I, I think it goes along with this. Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 18. Paul is just went through the fact that we're battling against the very powers of hell. He's went through talking about the armor of God. In verse 18, he says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That supplication has to do with an earnest, Prayer that is almost described in James chapter 5, verse 16. It means that we stretch ourselves out before God in our spirit and uh, get a hold of Him as never before and asking Him, pleading with Him to move in this situation. Because that's the only thing that's going to work today. Yes, we've got technology. Yes, we've got Facebook. We've got elections coming up. I hope you vote. Amen. And I hope you go into the polls to vote. Amen. Don't sit back. Pray and ask God to lead you and guide you. Right. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. But I will say this. I do not know how a Christian in good stead can vote in a way that will, uh, that will exalt and honor abortion. That's all I'm saying. Right, right. We have got to get out and vote. 
we have got to get out and begin to cry and begin to vote. But more importantly, we need to begin to pray as we have never prayed before. But preacher, we can't, don't, can't come to church. No, we can't come like we used to. But we can pray in our homes and we can get into a church. I mean, really, there is no reason. And I'm pretty sure Brother Peacock would not mind this at all. If there was enough people that wanted to come and pray, but get spread out, we could have people down the hall here, down in the in the fellowship hall. I mean, there's enough room in this church that Amen. you could spread out six feet apart. Yes. Even here in the sanctuary right now, there's enough room. Amen. Because where there's a will, there is a way. We have got to get back to united prayer as well. We have got to get back to where we're getting a hold of God with everything that we have. And Paul and Daniel also said in this fasting, we must realize there are times that we need to get a hold of God with fasting. In the book of Mark chapter 9, uh, 9. Mark chapter 9. Now I have to read down just a little. Mark chapter 9 is talking about the demonic boy who was brought before Jesus, who was terribly distressed to the devil, and he was being torn about and everything. And talks about the fact that Jesus and James, John, and Peter were coming off the Mount of Transfiguration, were coming down. These men that brought his son to the other disciples, they could not do anything to help him. But the story goes on, and this man had come to Jesus and said, If you're able, would you help my son? Jesus delivered the man's boy from the devil. He just cast the devil out and made the devil go. And God can still do that today, by the way. Amen. Are you ready? When we got people coming into our church full of the devil, demon possessed, are you ready to see what God would do? You better be prayed up. But Jesus, as the disciples come to him, Jesus, uh, in private and ask them, why could we not do it? Seems like church, there's a lot in the church today that can't do it, oh my. And Jesus said, this kind, we first told him in Matthew, because of your unbelief. But then he also read this in Matthew, and he told him here in Mark 9, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. There are times that the battle is so intense, we're going to have to say, no, Lord, I'm going to fast to get closer to you. I'm going to fast my meal. I'm going I'm to just get away from it right now and get close to you and ask you to move in this situation. Yeah. And we pray during that time of fasting before God. Fasting means doing without. And it's more specific, doing without food. But I'm going to make a statement here. I think it wouldn't hurt for us sometimes to fast Facebook. Fast up for media. That's right. That's right. Come on now. That's right. Amen. We get on Facebook, and I mean, what do you see posts on now? Oh, you know, this one is doing this, that one is doing that, and, this, and I'm wondering, have you prayed? Mm -hmm. Have you shot God? I especially love it when people get up and they were here to start to start at the end I don't want people to get, get, get mad because somebody asked them a question about it. <laughs> we have got to get that. It may mean fasting in Facebook. It may mean fasting TV. Because there's a lot of that trash on TV that ain't even worth watching. That's right, amen. That's right, but we have got to do our part and say, I'm going to get aside with God and I'm going to pray 
and seek him until the answer comes. Amen. That's right. My wife comes to the piano and I'm going to tell this last story. In Tennessee, back in the 80s, there was a preacher that had passed away. The day or two after this preacher passed away, this preacher had a lovely wife and had a daughter and a son. The son was happily married, had three beautiful daughters. But not long after this old preacher, old time Pentecostal preacher, passed away. This young man left. Home, left his wife, kids. Nobody knew where he was. They suspected foul play. They suspected he, probably, he was probably somewhere dead. Time went by and that mother, she started praying. 